Hey guys, that's sure coming out of you, Dave Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm glad to have you all here with me today. Today we're going to talk about freebies. Who doesn't love a good free champion? Now, I guess free is a loaded term in Raid Shadow Legends because you still have to accomplish tasks in order to get these champions. A lot of them that we talk about. Some of them are just daily logins. Some of them are champion fragments, fusions, etc. But these 15 champions, ranked in order from 15 to 1, are, in my opinion, the best accessible champions you don't have to pull shards for inside the game this guy pushing me well, i went from happy to angry skip said now i feel like kicking his ass Without further ado, let's just jump right into the list today, guys. I had a great, by the way, I had a great, like, last few days. I'm, I'm living on cloud nine right now. Uh, we instituted this new uh, game night. So we have, like, our cheesy little, don't mind my face there. I look a little out of it. We have, like, this cheesy little uh, Mario uh, shirts and stuff. And we're playing a lot of Mario Party at my, uh, at my house. Hopefully, you guys are doing well also. Uh, number 15 is going to be... Quintus. Quintus the Triumphant. So Quintus, I gotta be honest with you guys, he was a bit of a letdown for me, right? He does good damage, but there's a lot of champions in the game who do, who do uh, good damage. Of course, we get him from Live Arena, right? So uh, a Live Arena exclusive champion. He takes a while to get to. You got to get to, what is it, gold three or, or so to actually fit, uh, finalize the uh, fragments. But each day, I hear from more and more of you guys who are close to getting him. Some of you who are actually already do have him. So let me know your opinions on him overall. Again, he can smack, but I just feel like there's better nukers out there, especially void nukers in the game. I'd rather have a Leo, a Leori the proud i'd rather have a jirgid the breaker i actually rather have a baron so he's really good but by the time that you get him is he worth the reward of you know live arena grinding i don't know you guys can be the judge of that but i rank him number 15 by the way this list is crazy there's so many there's probably 20 really solid champions I left off. You know, talking about like the War Maidens and, and High Catoons, etc. Uh, there's a lot of farmable or, or good login champions that I did not make the list, honestly, because there's a lot of new additions as well. Uh, at number 14 on the list, it's Yannicka. That's right, I put Yannicka over Quintus the Triumphant. That might sound crazy to some of you guys, but it, I stand by it. I like Yannicka better. I think she's, she's really, really good. She can out-damage so many nukers who are talked about more than she is. You can get her from the clan quests and clan points, the clan shop, essentially, right? Uh, she's worth going for for everybody. She's my favorite spirit affinity nuker uh, outside of mythicals. And maybe I know there's one who uh, uh, always... Who is it? Who Who is the spirit affinity? Obviously, like, new in PvE, but anyway, she's up there. Ragash, maybe, right? But she's up there with spirit affinity. Certainly attack-based, right? Uh, she has an a Elven Judgment, does a ton of damage, removes shields uh, if she's under a Veil or Perfect Veil. She brings her own Perfect Veil with an extra turn, so you can open up with the A2, smack with the A3, and then come around and do an AoE. Attacks all enemies two times. A two-time AoE hitter on the A1 if she's under a veil. She does massive damage, guys. If you have not invested or gone after Yannicka, I implore you to consider doing so because she's really freaking good. Uh, Drekstar Blood Twin. Oh, Drekstar. He used to be probably like number one on a list like this. Uh, I think he's fallen off maybe a little bit just because of, you know, power creep and more options out there, right? I missed that. I missed those days. But what he does, he still does incredibly well. He's a defensive-based damage dealer and control champion. You can build him to control. You can build him to, again, this, this Burning Lash is one of the harder defensive AoEs. It's on a three-turn cooldown. You have a Provoke. You've got Burn. You've got a triple hitter. You've got self-heal on the A1. It makes him able to solo so much content. You get Drekstar Blood Twin from the Bazaar, from Tag Team Arena. You guys know what that is? Uh, but what makes this kit so unbelievably special? Special is of course the fiery blood passive where he can place an HP burn on the attacker when he's hit for two turns so you know whether you're trying to solo frost spider or basically half the doom tower bosses out there uh he's your guy right so really easy to build too accuracy and tanky really that's it and he can heal himself as I mentioned so I really love Drekstar I think he's worth going for still in the bazaar he's another reason outside of faction wars uh you know extra keys to do your daily 3v3 tactic team battles all right coming in at number 12 is going to be actually an epic on the list guys any guesses well 
It's Dark Kale. I love Dark Kale, man. I think he's one of the best epics in the game, truthfully. Uh, I kind of snubbed Archmage Helmet, who you get right before Dark Kale, or a couple before Dark Kale. Or is it right? No, I'm sorry. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple before Dark Kale. Sorry, my Doom Tower champion order out of out of calibration this morning. Uh, I love Archmage. But I think that Dark Kale just kind of takes the cake over him. Uh, he's so unique. He's, he's so good. He, he feels like he's a legendary kit. The AoE decrease attack for damage mitigation is great. But he's also increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target at the same time. 100% chance. This is a really good ability, especially for an epic. You just don't see abilities like this for epics too often. He also has three poisons and the poison sensitivity, all big versions, on his A3. He's mitigating critical rate which is 15 percent on bosses so he's mitigating boss critical rate through his passive and then he's instantly activating both poisons and burns on his a1 so two of those two poisons or one of each on his a1 that allows him to do so much damage against bosses uh it allows him to obviously both place the poisons and the boy sensitivity and then activate them uh he's got the he's just a really really solid kit in dark kale all right coming in at number 11 on the list guys is going to be none other than Vizix, and she's a dark elf not a knight revenant ash Vizix the unbow just want to keep you guys on your toes Vizix the Unbowed is, she was one of the worst Void Legendaries in the entire game for so long, and now she is not one of the best, but she's one of the best for progression, which is exactly what she, she ought to be, right? Because she's the final, well not the final, I guess the old school final daily login reward champion, right? So Vizix the Unbowed, I think she's absolutely incredible. She has a two-time hitter with turn meter manipulation. She has an AoE with decreased speed. She's got an AoE ally protect. She's got an AoE provoke as well. What doesn't she have? <laughs> Arguably, maybe she's even snubbed by being this low on the list. I don't know. What about you guys? How do you feel about Vizix? Is 11 appropriate for Vizix the Unbowed? I, I don't even know. You can make the case she's top five, honestly. You can make the case that, you know, maybe she should be a little bit lower even. It depends. I find that with Vizix the Unbowed, you use her a ton in the early game, a ton in the mid game, and then she falls off a bit compared to some ahead of her in the end game. But maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong there. Uh, she does a lot, a lot of protection, right, and control, which is so nice to all have in one kit. She used to suck, now she's really good. All right, number ten. I think I have Soul of the Drakes above Vizix the Unbowed, who is you know you could say might be better. You know, she, it feels like she's bringing a little bit more in her kit. But you get Silver Drakes so much earlier. Both are daily login reward champions. So I have Silver Drakes at number 10. Uh, she's got a decreased speed on her A1. She's got an AoE times two stun. And then she's got the revival, right? Uh, and she has to heal every turn. She's really one of the better healers out there. Certainly passive healers in the game. And then she revives, then she stuns, then she decreases speed, right? And she adds increased speed uh, throughout the battle as well. Yeah, I feel okay with it. I feel okay. Plus, she's my girl, Syl. I love you. It's Valentine's Day, Syl. I love you. For Valentine's Day, I thought I'd buy a gun. Or it's close to, depending on if this video goes live on Valentine's Day or the day after. Think about the time that you get, Syl, when you're playing this game. You likely need all of these things. And if you don't need all these things, you do need them all in one kit, right? Just between the heals and the control and the revive alone. But she brings more than that to the table. She's easy to build, she's defense based. I love her, I love Syl. Coming in at number nine on the list, guys, is gonna be Eryx. Dude, I like Eryx so much. She's grown on me so much. I wouldn't have even had her on previous lists, guys. I wouldn't have. And with Eryx, you know, she has a little bit less support than a Sil. Stop right there. Or a Vizix, for example, right? But where she makes up, where she lacks there, she really makes up for some insane control, insane damage. She's tough to kill. She's HP based. She has an AoE on her A1, removing a buff. She has an AoE stun on an A2 on a three turn cooldown. She's also transferring a random debuff from this champion to the targets that receive a stun from the skill. Targets plural, which is beautiful, right? You can just transfer debuffs off of her on the A2 while stunning them, while doing a ton of damage. Besides Taras, she's the hardest hitting HP based champion. Well, I guess Geralt uh, Gar Broadmaw too. 
hardest hitting legendary champion in the game besides Tyrus. Uh, Warped Guidance. Now we have that Ally Protect. So we do have a lot of support in this kit too through the Ally Protect and the counterattack, which leads into more AoEs on the A1 and more buff removal on the A1. Fills his champion's turn meter by 5% each time an ally inflicts a critical hit. Heals a champion by 5% of their max HP each time an enemy inflicts a critical hit. Whether this is arena, whether it's in a stun set for control, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, you can use her so many different ways. I see people throwing her in a, in a, in a provoke set and using her in Hydra as a damage dealer or support and uh, in our curse set, using her as a hex applier on Hydra clan boss, using her as a wave killer, using her as arena nuker. You can use her. She's so good. Curse City, I rely on her in a few different areas. One of the best stunners in the game because she has stun in her kit anyway, and you can put her in a stun or provoke or, oh, Oh, she's so good and she smacks did i mention that all right coming in at number nine guys coming in at number or excuse me that was number nine coming in at number eight i have a tie oh please oh please. only one on the list give me a break only one on the list right this was a tough one because nobody in the game has played either of these champions nobody in the world has high mother maud at the time of this recording and no one in the world has carnage at the time of this recording so these were very very difficult freebies to rank because i hate ranking champions or even talking about champions that nobody has ever played but i have to include them kind of around this is why they were tied to kind of around where i thought they would fall right in the middle of the list right so number eight is going to be carnage in maud uh carnage looks really cool but not as strong as a lot of the other mythical champions out there in the game in my opinion just on the looks on his base form by the way he's the uh you know the the final reward so to speak from cursed city okay so he's the the, the newest addition one of only two mythical champions on the the list today in carnage the anarch so on his base form he looks really freaking cool like talk about falling demon angel motif going on over here right guys he's got single hitters hitters on his entire you know uh, uh base form uh, a double hitter removing buffs a double hitter uh he's got hp swapping mechanics stuff like that he's got stealing 100 percent turn meter so it's a really really good uh base form but it's all single target and then when we switch to the other form bigger wings which is very impressive as well and then he has the AoEs. AoE ignoring shield, ignoring ally protects when attacking enemies under one or more buffs. Unkillable, uh, ignore when attacking enemies under two debuffs. And on the A3, Infernal Stars, this is his big nuke. If the target is killed by this skill under three or more different debuffs, plays a block revive and he has a self heal in there as well. I gotta be real with you guys. The kit does not blow me away. Really? You're not gonna let me have my moment here. He does have speed and arena battles by 33% though. So I think he's going to be ever a lot of people. I think he's gonna be the new go-to meta nuker in about, I don't know, what? three four five six months whenever people start getting him uh so maybe you could argue he belongs a little bit higher i just have trouble doing that considering and that's mainly because of the uh because of the, the the aura i think uh i don't know what about you guys maybe i'm too high even on that assessment you know he looks really cool he looks really cool He's got like the, the eye of Soren over here or something going on on the uh, on the sword. Anyway, that's Carnage. Uh, Maud, for different reasons, I have her ranked in the same area. Uh, and, and by the way, all of the champions above them are incredibly good, obviously, right? High Mother Maud looks incredible again, but she takes so long to get. It begs the question, like all the Doom Tower hard champions, you'll find a massive lack of Doom Tower hard legendaries because, you know, with a Basatha, for example, like, yes, objectively, he could be on the list, but by the time you get him, not a ton of people use him in a lot of areas in the game. You know, some niche areas for sure. Anyway, she's got a revive on a four-turn cooldown. A good revive at that. She's got a heal on the passive, or uh, excuse me, a cleanse on the passive. A Tuana Rock-like uh, passive. And then she has an AoE with decreasing duration of all enemy buffs by two turns. Increased duration of all ally buffs. I, I won't lie, even looking at her base stats too, she's got a really, really strong kit. She really does. Uh, but is it worth waiting, you know, potentially years and that's not an exaggeration to get her will will she be power crept in the in the year plus that it takes to get her i don't know that remains to be seen but she does have i think a lot of people are actually down on her and with all due respect i think a lot of people uh maybe i'm wrong here but i think a lot of people are penalizing her kit 
unfairly based on the ridiculous amount of time it takes to actually get her. You know what I'm saying? I think she has a really strong kit, personally. What about you guys? Cronum comes in at number seven on our list. I don't have Cronum because I have no friends. Aha. <laughs> I thought my jokes were bad. <laughs> Cronum is a champion you get from in-game referrals, friend referrals, right? So I don't have him. I do have Ninja, because I was playing back in the day when he was released in the game. And Ninja's kit is is kind of kind of like Cronum's. Uh, you know, a bit better, I think, but still, they kind of got the same thing going on. He attacks and he applies the HP burn, and then he has this great instant activation. Each hit, 100% chance of instantly activating HP burns on the target. Uh, so really, really good boss killer can duo... Uh, or even solo lower levels of Sand Devil, and just a really, really good burner uh, overall inside the game. You know, Spider, uh, Hydra, wherever you need a burner. Again, Sand Devil excels. So especially for players who missed out on Ninja, I would really prioritize going after Cronum, a very, very good burn activator. So again, I don't have him, but I've seen him enough, and I actually know a lot of players who rely on him heavily in multiple areas of the game. Uh, coming in at number six on the list, guys, is going to be none other than talk about another guy who i embarrassingly do not have it is robin to drake's blood yeah that's right i uh i pulled arbiter super early and then i just never did the arbiter missions <laughs> so so bad and so embarrassing to say considering this channel is kind of like a job for me too i should probably do my job you know what i'm saying either way he's a beast and i hate going against robin to drake's blood <laughs> in the arena specifically right he's got Tons of debuffs, you know, he, the only only person that puts him to shame here, I would say, is like a uh, a real bone spear on her single target, right? He's got a four time hitter, decreased defense, weaken, decreased speed, block buffs, true fear on all enemies. If four or more debuffs are on the after the attack, excuse me, an AOE block, active skills block, passive skills, uh, specifically this ability being able to block passive skills against like a Marichka or like half the champions in the game is incredibly strong. I think he is uh, really good, and I'm going to go for him, finally, right? All right. Coming in at number five, guys, is going to be... Oh, I love this guy. This is going to be a guy that probably nobody saw coming this high on the list. But what can I say? I think that this guy is, if I can remember his faction, I think this guy is just truly underrated in every sense of the word. It's Uros the Soul Cage. Uh, he is a Doom Tower hard champion that he's not one of the last guys to get. So you get him pretty. Look at look at the little fella. Why you look so sad? I say this every time I talk about him. Look at his little head. What? Why are you so down the dumps, Eros? What's wrong, man? Cheer up, big fella. Oh my God, can you let me do what I need to do? I don't know why, I love his little head. <laughs> he's so good, man, he's so good. Uh, he's got shield on the A1. He can solo like half the Doom Tower bosses. He's like Drexar, but even better at soloing bosses for, uh, well, let's just talk about it now, for this passive. Actually, let's talk about it after. <laughs> he's got an AoE. He's decreasing turn meter by 15% on all enemies under poison, which is always the case because he has it on his passive. Uh, a lot of poison. Also has a chance, a uh, 100% uh, chance of placing a decreased speed on enemies under two poisons. A stun on enemies under three poisons. Instantly activates whenever he's revived by Ryan the Conjurer, his companion champion. He's got this beautiful big version of Strengthen and big version of Ally Protect. This ability in the game, a, few, a couple of champions have this ability. I want to say maybe Korrigar, Death Bell, and I want to say tyrant ixlamore uh the big version of strengthen and actually does tyrant have i think he has increased defense right either way big version of strengthen and ally protection that is 75 percent damage mitigation on all allies on a three turn cooldown it's one of the strongest damage mitigator inside the entire game then on his passive he's placing poisons right whenever he's attacked he's placed a 50 percent chance 75 when booked plays a poison on the attacker whenever they're under a, a whenever an ally is attacked while under a strength in which he has plays a provoke 75 percent chance on the attacker uh and then he has you know the ability to make him a solo scarab king on top of all of that oh he's so nasty resistant all battles by 80 a lot of hp uh he's a really good provoker really good provoker from this uh from this passive in the arena he's an annoyingly good provoker he's a good solo champion he's one of the best support champions he's got good cc potential as well i really like earls can you tell i really like earls the soul cage all right coming in at number four is going to be none other than arbiter 
Arbiter's just so good, especially Hydra. I mean, especially Arena. That's what everybody knows her for. She took a little hit in the Arena when Speed, Go First Teams got, got a little bit outside the meta, but now they are so good. Uh, they're still so good when farming your Great Hall and when doing, you know, just trying to bust through the Arena as quickly as possible, right? She's still one of the best. She's got two turn meter ability, filling abilities, right? So you can use them both. In Hydra, I just use them both, like a 20% turn meter fill, and then a 30% turn meter fill, and a great heal, and an increase attack. People forget how good this heal is, because heal is not necessarily instrumental in the arena on the first go-round of Mentor of Heroes, but we're on a three-turn cooldown, when you just read this ability, we've seen it a million times, but I think that we associate it with go first arenas, uh, you know, increase attack, turn meter boost. But you forget how good that heal is and how good the A2 is. Decrease the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn is great in the arena. It's great in Hydra too. Uh, I just think she's got a, a simple kit. You can argue maybe she's too high on the list, but I just think she's still with that speed uh, uh, aura too. She's still going to be the most used free champion in the game. Certainly up there, right? Up there. So I put her at number four. Coming in at number three, guys. And this was tough for me not to put her at number one or two because I love her so much. She's one of my favorite mythical champions in the game. And she's a permanent fusion in the game. And it's Lady Makage. What doesn't this champion do? Oh, Tell me where you'd rank, where you would rank Lady Mikage. I don't know what it is, but when she was first announced and released and people first started talking about her, people weren't that high on her, but clearly they're coming around really quickly. She's absolutely worth going for. I think the fusion is very difficult, especially if you just don't have those legendaries, but... I do think it's a pretty fair fu being a permanent fusion in the game, right? Uh, either because she's the reward is so good in Lady Makage. She's the Spider Woman on her uh, on her all. She looks so cool too. It just like. Love everything about her kit. I'm not going to read her entire kit because I'll be here all day. She's a mythical, but she's increasing duration. She's decreasing duration. One of those abilities, extremely valuable in the game. She's got Imperial Decree, which is for my money, my favorite ally attack in the entire game. You have all allies on a four turn cooldown, and then you have increased attack and increased crit damage. Uh, most ally attacks are increased attack and increased crit rate, you know, but she has both of the damage, uh, bumping up your damage buffs on her ally attack. So, so strong. At the start of the champion's turn, removes all debuffs from the ally with the highest attack. That's really strong passive there that people often overlook. Then on her next form, she has an AoE stun and decreased turn meter on th by 30%. This is 100% stun, 30% turn meter decrease, all on a three turn cooldown. What? And then she's got to increase accuracy on everybody, removes all buffs from all enemies, and then a big version of weaken on all enemies. That is a insanely strong kit. Ally attack, buff duration, uh, stuns, uh, increased accuracy, removing all buffs. She's And she's one of the fastest champions in the game at 115 base speed. Great base stats. 21k, almost 22k on the HP. Wow, it's going to be tough to beat that. Uh, but, you know me. I'm a sucker for these two. Lydia the Death Siren comes in at number two on the list, guys. She is just so good. This, this ability, I mean, it's tough to put anybody over Lady Makage. And truthfully, guys, Lady Makage, Lydia, and Mithrala, you can really you can really put any of them anywhere on the top three, you know? Maybe Lady Makage is number one. I don't know, in my opinion. You could, frankly, put a lot of these champions at number one. Uh, but the AoE with the weakened, decreased defense, strengthened, and increased speed, I just don't think there's a better ability in the game like this to set up your team. I really don't. Uh, you just get everything. All in one three turn cooldown, you know? She does have, you know, a, a useful A3 with block buffs, block active skills, poison sensitivity. And then, of course, she has her incredibly unique death hold, which comes in handy, not just in the arena, not just against Ice Golem, anywhere with minions, basically, or any, you know, like, I can't count the number of times I'm like, ah, I'm glad I have Lydia on the team for that death soul, you know, outside of just the arena where you, you know, the, the, the implications are obvious, the utility is obvious, but think about it, Frost Spider, she makes it so much easy, I don't have to worry about there being an HP burn on the Frost Spider anymore, because I have Lydia on my team, she just denies revival of a boss, that's badass, and then on top of that, you know, Tormund waves, ah, they're annoying, oh, I have Lydia on my team, she'll just deny the revival, don't worry about it, oh, revive on death on Crutraxa, deny revival, don't worry about it she's just so good 
And of course, it all starts with that Siren's Whale as well. Uh, even her A1 is really good and uh, and unique, you know? So overall, I just think she is the perfect reward for finishing Faction Wars inside this game. Uh, number one, I do have Mithral Lifebane. The Hydra Clan Boss Reward Champion. This is not going to be news to any of you guys out there how much I love Mithrala. And again, for me, the difference between these top three and the rest are just how unbelievably much is stuffed into one champion's kit, right? Mithrala has poison on her A1. She's got increased defense, increased attack, and hex. Uh, I mean, this is such a good ability Specifically in Hydra, but really anywhere. It's just such an insanely good ability uh, to get both increased defense and increased attack on a three-turn cooldown. But then Hex has become so instrumental since the day she was added to the game. They've buffed it. You know, it's so much better than it used to be. And she has it, you know. Then she has the full cleanse, the big version of Strengthen, and a big shield on a three-turn cooldown. So now she has increased from a support, you know, standpoint... She's setting up your attack-based nukers. She got increased defense. She got big version strengthen. She got a really good a shield. She got a full cleanse. She got petrification, which is so good in the arena. And then she has the uh, the accuracy, the increase, right? It allows you to build her with such high resistance that it takes a champion that honestly would be probably a B plus, maybe A minus in the arena, and it makes her S tier just because. You can build her that she can resist everything and then just dish out her petrification throughout the duration of the battle. Just off her passive, it makes her so incredibly strong, you know, provided she lands the hex. So there we go. And you can use her absolutely everywhere in the game. There we go, guys. That's the top 15 free champions in the game. Who did I snub? Let me know in the comments below. Much love. And as always, take care, guys.